Hi everyone, I'm Jenna and this is Learn Academic English. On this channel, I help English learners take their language to a higher level. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about words that we use in English but they were originally borrowed from French. These are words that have become part of the English vocabulary but they were originally words that were borrowed from French and because of that, they sometimes have a tricky pronunciation. So in today's lesson, I'll show you these words. I'll explain tricky points about how to pronounce them and I'll show you some pictures to help you understand the meanings of these words because some of these words might be new for you. Don't forget to please give this video a like, leave a comment and practice with me below and subscribe if you would like to have more lessons like this one and please note that I teach online classes with four other amazing teachers. If you're interested in joining us, check out the information in the description box below or leave a comment and let me know that you're interested and I'll give you more information. Okay, so the first word that we have here is the word déjà vu. Déjà vu. Déjà vu literally means something like already seen. Déjà vu is a situation when you enter a situation but you feel like you've already experienced it before. There isn't really another way to say this in English, so we use the term déjà vu for this. Have you ever experienced déjà vu? I have. There have been a couple of times that I have entered a place and I have thought to myself, I have been here before. I recognize something about it and it's giving me a strong feeling. Okay, the next one is rendezvous. Rendezvous. Now that's how we pronounce this word in English. It's not pronounced like that in French, but notice that like in French, the S here is going to be silent. Rendezvous. The same thing with the Z. A rendezvous is like a kind of romantic getaway or like a little adventure. Next, au pair. An au pair is a person who lives with a family and takes care of their children. Now it's a little bit different from a babysitter because typically a babysitter comes in and out. A babysitter might come on the weekend to watch children for an evening or might come to your house like after school to watch your kids for a couple of hours. An au pair is different. An au pair usually lives with the family and is a full-time babysitter. And we usually think that an au pair is a person who comes from another country and lives with the family. That's not always the case, but often. Au pair. Okay, next we have the word faux pas. A faux pas means something that you do that is inappropriate or embarrassing and it causes you to feel like shame because you've done something, you know, usually in front of other people that is inappropriate or embarrassing. We can say that he committed a faux pas. So it's something that he did that was not appropriate for that situation. Notice that the X and the S are not pronounced. They are silent just as they are in French. Okay, the next one is boutique. A boutique is uh, a small shop usually that sells like special items, a boutique. Like the French pronunciation, this is going to have stress on the second syllable, boutique. Next, genre. A genre is a type of music or film or literature. For example, you could ask someone, what's your favorite genre of music? Oh, my favorite genre is jazz or um, 90s pop genre of films. So that could be like sci-fi or French dramas. So it's a type of creative work, like a category. Okay, next we have RSVP. RSVP stands for uh, the French word respondez, 
s'il vous plaît. I didn't pronounce that exactly correctly, but in French that means respond please. We use RSVP when we have invited someone to an event. Usually this is a kind of formal party, like a baby shower or a wedding. And on the invitation, it asks the person to RSVP. RSVP by October 1st or please RSVP. That means please respond and let us know if you will attend. And this is used as a verb. For example, don't forget to RSVP. Okay, next we have the word bureau. A bureau is like a large chest of drawers. We can also use bureau for an office in the government, like the Bureau of Internal Affairs or the Census Bureau. So it's a kind of um, organization inside the government. Next, we have guillotine. A guillotine is a machine that you might have heard of that cuts off a person's head. And the guillotine was used during the French Revolution. It became famous after that because that's how members of the elite class were beheaded. Guillotine. All right, next we have chateau. Now chateau is a word that we could use um, the French word chateau or we could use the English word palace. We use both. Um, it depends a little bit on the situation. Like if you're talking about European architecture, a lot of people might use the word chateau. So chateau is the word for palace. It's the French word and we use both chateau and palace in English. And next we have facade. A facade is the front of a building and we use this word facade a lot. We don't really have another way to say this. For example, I love the old bank building downtown. It has such a beautiful facade. If you're talking about your house, you could use the word facade or maybe just the front of your house. A house is not really the type of building that you might use this word for, but for a big building or a beautiful building, we often use the word facade. We can also use the word facade to talk about a person. You know how sometimes people have a kind of um, like identity that they show to people? That could be that person's facade. And it's often used to deceive others. Okay, and finally over here we have foyer. Foyer is the word for an entryway in a building, a hotel, or even a house. Okay, next we have some words about food. Now, I want to mention that in English, we have a lot of words about food that are borrowed from French. This is just some of them, but there are many, many more, especially when you're talking about um, more expensive food. Okay, the first one is hors d'oeuvres. Now, that's not the correct French pronunciation, but in English, we say hors d'oeuvres, hors d'oeuvres. Notice that the H and the S are silent here. Or d'oeuvres. Or d'oeuvres are appetizers. These are small um, pieces of food that are served before a meal. This is often used if you go to a party. Or d'oeuvres might be served. You might see it on an invitation. You know, um, graduation party. Or d'oeuvres will be served. The next one is a la carte. A la carte is when you go to a restaurant and you order food, but you order only the main dish, not the sides. For example, I want to get the braised chicken, but I just want it a la carte. I don't want side dishes. And sometimes when you go to a restaurant, you can see a section that is called a la carte. Next, we have the word saute. Saute is a verb and that's when you have um, food that you prepare on the stovetop and you saute in a pan. The next one is quiche. Quiche. Quiche is a very popular food that we eat in the United States, but this is originally a French word. It's a dish that's made with eggs and usually cheese, vegetables, sometimes meat, and it's baked inside a flaky crust. Quiche. 
The next one is parfait. Now, like many of these other words, the T at the end of the word is silent. Parfait. A parfait is not that common, but it's a kind of um, dessert that's made by combining eggs and cream and sugar and some other ingredients, maybe vanilla, and it's frozen or it's served cold, usually with fruit. And the last one is sommelier. A sommelier is a person who is an expert in wine. A very fancy restaurant may have a sommelier who works there to help people choose their wines. Or they are people who work in the wine industry. They are well trained and educated in everything about wine. But their main job is to advise people about wine. If you would like to know more about words that come from French, I'm going to leave a link to another video about common words that we use in English that originally came from French, but they have tricky pronunciations. Note that some of these words are quite common and in many cases there is no other way to say them in English. So it's a good idea for you to put these words into your English vocabulary and note that because they come from French, they do have tricky pronunciations. If you have any questions, please let me know and I hope to see you back here again soon. Take care.